Hello, my name is Ivan Fedorich and I'm the head of NGO 7000 in Ukraine. This is the message to Jordan Peterson and all the intellectuals in the West who think that Russia is somehow superior to the West, that Russian Federation shouldn't be intimidated and Ukrainians are supposed to surrender their territories to avoid further escalation and the risk of possible nuclear war. First of all, Jordan, I would like to thank you for your work. It helped me a lot. I finally decided to do something meaningful, but I never thought that my first video would be addressed to you. It saddened me a lot to hear in your last video what you said about Russia and making peace with this terrorist state from the person who knows a lot about the suffering of Ukrainians, about Holodomor and Gulag Archipelago, where millions of Ukrainians died in severe agony. I hope you're just wrong and you were not recruited by FSB when you were in the rehab in Moscow or Serbia. So I would like to point out some of the statements you made in your last video. First, the West should not back Russia as a nuclear power into the corner. It could lead to a disaster, a nuclear war. By saying this, you suggest that collective West should abandon Ukraine and let the Russians do their onslaught, like in Echkeria in 1999, Georgia 2008, and Syria 2015. Many politicians, like uh, former President Donald Trump, share your view that Ukraine should negotiate with Russia and surrender its territories in order to avoid further escalation and nuclear war. But let me remind you, wasn't it Neil Chamberlain who brought peace of our time in 1938, making a deal with Hitler, surrendering Czechoslovakian Sudeten to the Nazis? That the settlement of the Czechoslovakian problem, which has now been achieved, is, in my view, only the prelude to a larger settlement in which all Europe may find peace. Did it stop World War II? Or did it just increase the appetites of the Nazi regime and the communist regime? You were an admirer of Alexander Solzhenitsyn and you remember what he wrote about Ukrainian nationalists. They've killed communist stukach or snitches and criminal thugs who terrorized political prisoners in Gulag and that made Norilsk and Kingir uprising possible. And that also further destroyed the Gulag. When I worked in the Territory of Terror Museum, I had an honor to interview dozens of people who were in Gulag and took part in Norilsk and Kingir uprising. One of them was Miroslav Simcic, the commander of Ukrainian insurgent army, who spent 32 years in Gulag. And you know what he said? The same thing was confirmed by George Kennan in his long telegram. Soviet power is highly sensitive to logic of force. For this reason, it can easily withdraw and usually does when strong resistance is encountered at any point. So this is why your premise is wrong. The more modern weapon will be received by Ukrainians from Western allies, the faster this war will be over. Besides, if Ukraine will make peace with Russians, what will happen next to Moldova, Lithuania, Estonia, Poland, Latvia, and also wouldn't send a green signal to all the thugs on the planet that they can attack Israel, Taiwan, 
South Korea or Japan? Isn't that the shortest way to World War III? You named also other theories for the reasons the Russians invaded into Ukraine. But it was really identical to Russian propaganda. As a scientist, you know, you shouldn't use only one source of information to make such judgments. You made some geographical and historical mistakes, but I'm going to point out only a few of them. You, for some reason, named Ukrainian government pro-Western regime. Ukraine and Baltic states, Moldova, maybe Armenia and Georgia have functioning democracy. The rest of the post-Soviet states are authoritarian in their nature. So, are you naming the functioning democracies pro-Western regimes? Is the authoritarian Russia or Kazakhstan the model of independence? Also, you mentioned that Russian speakers are somehow persecuted in Ukraine. Their rights are limited. But that's also not true. If you look at the map, who voted for President Zelensky, he won almost in every oblast of Ukraine, both Russian-speaking and Ukrainian-speaking. Besides, if Russian speakers are persecuted, why does Odessa, Saporizhia and Kharkiv Oblast, where most of citizens are Russian-speaking, so fiercely resist the forces of Russian Federation? Because it's not about the language, it's the clash of civilizations, as Samuel Huntington named it. The Western civilization and the Asian civilization, or Orthodox civilization, you name it. But your main point is that Russia is somehow superior to the West. It's true that Western society is paralyzed by neo-Marxist and postmodernist ideology that celebrities and officials can't even answer what a man or a woman is. It can lead the West to the totalitarian future, of course. But still, in these harsh circumstances, you have room for debate, you have room for free speech. But in Russia, all the media is controlled by the state. The opposition is either in prison, like Alexei Navalny, or killed, like Boris Nemtsov. I've always wondered why the notions of Western intellectuals about Russia are so naive. The term rottening West was coined by, by the literature critic Chevillov, who, by the way, lived and died in Paris. Russians always felt contempt to other nations. Look what Scottish general Patrick Gordon who served in Moscovia, wrote about them in 17th century. The people, being morose and niggard, and yet overweening and valuing themselves above all other nations. Holy Roman Empire diplomat Sigismund von Herberstein wrote in 16th century that the Muscovites boast that they are the only true Christians and condemned us as deserters from the primitive church the Muscovite Grand Prince always washes his hands after they were touched by a Catholic. The term Russism that appeared recently, obviously deriving from Nazism, precisely describes what Russians feel about other nations. That's why 75% of them support the war in Ukraine, even when they call Ukrainians their brothers. If you want to describe Russians in psychological language, they suffer from narcissistic personality disorder. They are the Übermensch, who are much higher, nobler than other Untermenschen. Highly regarded by you and other Western intellectuals, writer Fyodor Dostoevsky wrote this in his Demons. Only one nation is God-bearing, that's the Russian people. In his letter to Apollon Maikov, he wrote, Our nation is much higher, nobler, honest, naive, more able, 
and is full of highest Christian thought that is not understood by Europe with its dead Catholicism and contradictory Lutheranism. If Russian nation is so enlightened by Christian revival, why do they have such skyrocketing levels of abortion, divorces, poverty, aggression on all levels of society? Why is Russian population and life expectancy declining? Does that sound to you as a Christian nation? Do the Christian soldiers rape children, women, loot and kill civilians, castrate prisoners of war and murder them? The latest edition of Der Spiegel came out with the headline Er is das Volk. He, Putin, is the people. 75% of Russians support the war in Ukraine or as they call it, special operation. The atrocities of their army doesn't bother them. In fact, they feel proud of them. For instance, the 64th separate motorized brigade that murdered, looted and raped civilians in Bucha near Kyiv received an honorary guard status from Vladimir Putin. Unfortunately, Jordan, Russians are the new Nazis. And the only way out from this situation is to fight evil not to negotiate with terrorists. Like Russian Empire collapsed after the defeat in Russo-Japanese War in 1905, like USSR collapsed after the defeat in Cold War, the same way Russian Federation will collapse after this Ukrainian war. And hopefully this, the, this will cure Russian people from the narcissistic disorder. Like Germans were cured after the defeat in the World War II. As a post I hope Jordan you're just wrong and you will change your mind. I hope you were not recruited by FSB or threatened by them. But still, you know how KGB called Western intellectuals who defended USSR. They've called them useful idiots because they didn't have to bribe them they didn't have to threaten them. They did their job for free. The risk of nuclear war is high. But remember George Kennan. Remember all of those who died in gulags. Risks are high. But the freedom is a much higher value to pay the price. I am Ivan Fedoric from NGO 7000 Ukraine. I am open to discussion. God bless you.